I'm going to show you how to make this plankton map using QGIS and Illustrator. I'm first going to install the Globe Builder plugin, and then I'll use that plugin to actually change where the center of my map will be. And normally I'd also use the Graticules from this plugin, but I ran into a bug, so I'll be manually adding them in from Natural Earth later. And then I'll adjust my map background to be completely transparent and my country fill color to be black. And then I'll just click add the globe to map. And now I'll actually change the outline of the polygons to be black. And I'll also add in my 30 degree graticule now, which helps indicate the cardinal directions of my map. But since the purpose of the graticule is quite secondary to the main purpose of my map, I'm going to lower them in terms of visual hierarchy. So I'm going to do this by dragging the graticule layer below my land polygons and also changing their stroke color to be a medium or dark gray. And to make sure that we actually can see the graticule when we export it, I'm just gonna bump up the width very slightly. And it's hard to see now because our background's transparent, but we'll see the graticule in future steps. I'll quickly give this project a save. And next I'll create a new print layout, which is where we'll actually start building our map for exporting. I'll make the background transparent again and then add in our map layer and zoom in. And now I'm gonna add in my raster data, which I've exported from a ZAR file from the Copernicus Marine Service. And if you need this data, I've linked my repository in the description, which has a bunch of different Jupyter Notebook tutorials on how I did this. So QGIS will take a while to load these, but it helps with loading time if you actually hide all your layers or turn off their visibility while they load. So I'm also gonna collapse the view of these layers so that my layers panel feels a little bit less cluttered. And I'll turn back on my countries, my graticules, and my globe group and I'll make my first plankton raster visible. And when we just look at that automatic display, we can see that if we just use that default continuous raster symbology, our map is almost entirely black or purple. So what this tells me is that most of our data is likely skewed right. So most of our data is on the lowered end. We can also confirm this by looking at how the quantile classification uh, of our data looks, which puts an equal number of data points in each class break. And you can see with Quantile that we see much more variation now. So because our data is skewed right, we'll need to push the numeric range of our symbology colors a bit lower to capture more patterns in the data. So we'll use 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and 2 with a purple to blue to green to white color ramp. And now we see our first plankton map. And if you're curious of how I actually developed this color ramp, I've linked the DataViz webinar series where I discuss a little bit more about my process behind this in the description. So we'll want to keep the symbology the same for every raster in this map since we're animating over time. So what we'll do now is copy and paste the raster style to all of our layers. And I'll do that by clicking on our styled raster layer and I'll hover over styles and click on copy style. And now we can paste the style to all the rest of our layers. So I'll click on the next raster, I'll scroll all the way down, press shift and right click on the last layer and paste the style. And now all of our rasters have that same symbology. Then I'll make sure that my map looks right in my map layout. And it mostly does, but I also need to remember to uncheck the background so that we actually have a transparent background. And now we're ready to export it from QGIS. So we can go to plugins and Python console, and I'll paste in my QGIS export script, which you'll find a link to in the description. And we'll just need to adjust it in three places. First, we need to put in the path to my current QGIS project. Next, we need to adjust the print layout name. And lastly, we need to add the path to my output directory, which is where I want all of my exports to be saved. And I'll press this play button. And this will take a while, but what the script will do is loop through all of the raster layers individually and make each one visible within the print layout we made and export it. And in the meantime, we can actually set up our next export script, which will be for Illustrator, which is still in the same repository that I linked in the description. But what we will do here is quite similar. So we're gonna change the path to the input directory, which will now be the one that contains all the globes that we're exporting from QGIS. And next, we'll also put in the path to the output directory. Which, but once our maps are actually exported from QGIS, we can now create our first Illustrator project. So I'll make a 1080 by 1350 layout since I'm posting this on social media, on Instagram. And I'll use RGB since my map will be displayed on screens. I'll press the M key to get the shortcut for the rectangle tool. And I'll just drag it to fill the whole canvas and make it black. And then I'm going to add this starry sky photo that I found on Pixabay and in the 
appearance panel, I'll change its opacity to be 40%, so it's a little less dominant. And then I'm gonna draw another rectangle and use the gradient tool, which has the shortcut of the letter G, and I'll make it this purpley color, and I'll rotate it to be negative 90 degrees, and also just pull this bottom node down slightly until I feel like it looks right. And then I'll drag in our first plankton map for March 1st. And I'm gonna make a bunch of different atmospheric effects to this globe using techniques that I learned from John Nelson's YouTube channel. I highly suggest checking out his YouTube channel. He is such an inspiration for me and so many different cartographers and I've learned so much from him. So I'll link some of his videos in the description as well. So I'll start with the effects that are gonna go below our globe. So I'll first make a black circle and use the outer glow effect which you can also find in the help bar if you don't know where that is. And I'll make it a light blue. And then for the effects on top of my globe, I'll first create a vignette and I'll use a radial gradient that is semi-transparent black to fully transparent black. And then I'll create a blurry blue stroke on the outline of my globe just for a touch more of that atmospheric effect. And lastly, I'll add this ellipse for the top of my globe and I'll use a gradient and I'll play around with using white and different transparencies. And now we can add our title and I was also inspired by John Nelson for this one. So I'm gonna add a little bit more spacing to my letters and we can even add a gradient to these letters in Illustrator as well. But I'll leave it as it is for now. And of course, you gotta write in the credits and cite your data. And lastly, we need to make a legend. So I'll create separate text boxes for all my different legend parts and align them vertically. And then I'll drag in my legend color bar, which you can actually just export in a map layout by itself from QGIS and drag it around in here until it looks like how you want, or you can even screenshot it from QGIS. And then I just calculated what X value or basically where each label should be placed in the color bar based on what value that they represented. And then I just copied my title text for my date text. And now we're in the final touch stage, so you can adjust anything you might need, change the colors or adjust the different gradients, change different opacities until it looks good to your eye. And now we're ready to export from Illustrator. So I'll navigate to File, Scripts, Other Scripts, and I'll find where I have that Illustrator export script saved. And then I let this run, and this is gonna take a long time, so just be warned. But once this is done, we can actually animate it now in Adobe Premiere. I like adding bins and then dragging and dropping all of my Illustrator PNGs into those bins. And then I'll click on the top layer, I'll scroll to the bottom, I'll press Shift and then click on my bottom layer, and then I can drag them all into my video layout. And with all of them still highlighted, I will right click and go to speed and duration and change the duration of each clip to be 0.03 seconds. And also make sure to check the ripple edit checkbox so that all the spaces in between the clips are deleted and press okay. And then now we're ready to export our animation. So we'll go to the top of the Premiere window and I'll navigate to the export tab and adjust my video settings to match my source. And then I'll click export from the bottom right and there we have it. There is our beautiful plankton map. And I feel like they really just remind you that the ocean isn't just full of water, but it's full of life as well. So I hope that you try this for yourself and you let me know how it goes. I'd love to see what you create. So yeah, with that, happy mapping.